Peter, the floor is yours. Thank you very much, Dea. Thank you very much, team, and uh, welcome all participants uh, who joined us this uh, webinar today. Uh, I'd like to share my slides. Just give me a moment. Yeah, just a few welcoming words uh, on behalf of All Digital. Thank you very much again for joining us. Uh, this event is the Weeks campaign uh, that we are running every year. And our motto this year is enhance your digital skills, which is aligned with the European Year of Skills uh, announced by the European Commission. And the All Digital Weeks campaign is one of the major European campaigns, awareness raising campaigns or digital skills, digital empowerment, skills for inclusion. And uh, it's organized and run by the All Digital Network uh, since 2010. And since then, it has helped uh, almost um, 1.5 million people to get online, to enhance their digital skills uh, through training programs and different uh, events and activities. Uh, this year, it's a three-year, uh, sorry, three weeks long campaign, which uh, was uh, launched uh, last uh, Monday on the 17th April, and it's running until the 7th of May, with a lot of activities that you can check out and follow on the odigitalweeks.eu website. Uh, the campaign is, um, is supported uh, and endorsed by the European Commission, and it involves a number of partners, national partners, international partners, local organizations in many European countries, including digital competence centers, libraries, schools, universities, and other type of organizations. This year, we focus on several core teams, including DigCom, digital skills certification, digital skills for equity, diversity, and inclusion, digital media literacy and culture. And actually, today's event is very much aligned with the digital media literacy topic. But we are also focusing on cybersecurity and safer internet, digital skills for environment and sustainability, and digital skills for specific sectors. I would like to mention our supporters. I already mentioned it's co-funded by the European Commission, and we are we have uh, Microsoft and Certiport, our industrial partner, supporting our campaign activities. We have 21 national coordinators in 21 different countries who are coordinating and promoting events and activities in their countries, and we also have 19 strategic partners other international or European level organizations who are promoting and supporting our campaign activities. It's important that anyone can join the campaign by uh, organizing an activity, a training program, an event, registering at our website and putting your event on the map. We have hundreds of events already shown on the All Digital Weeks map. And we are organizing a series of international or European level events. Uh, Today is one of them, and this is the list of events for last week. Uh, we officially launched the campaign last Wednesday, and this week uh, we are going to have four events, two of them today, and one of them is the CRA project enhancing critical thinking through media literacy presentation, which is the topic of today, and a lot of events uh, planned for next week with the closing event uh, next uh, Friday, uh, is going to be kind of summary of everything that has happened over the three weeks. Uh, if you need more information, please check out, our, check out our campaign website and don't hesitate to contact us if you have any questions. Thank you very much for your attention and uh, I'd like to give the floor back to my colleague Dea. Thank you very much, Peter. Okay, I will start by sharing my screen. Uh, Peter already gave you a nice overview of all digital weeks, uh, and I'm going to give the, our menu for uh, for today's event. So we already started with welcoming to the all digital weeks, giving the overview of the campaign. We're not going to focus on what is the main point of this event. Actually, it is a Kral, uh project, and I'm going to give you a short presentation to give you an overview of it. And then we're going to focus on the Kral methodology. Uh, you will uh, soon find out more about it. And then something that we wanted to, to do with this event is to actually give you the first-hand experience with the Corel uh, course. 
So you will also be able to, um, to participate in it. And then we're going to show you the Corral uh, platform. And, and like I said already, at the end, we're going to have a short Q&A session where to answer any of your questions or uh, ish, or any burning comments you may uh, have during the during the event. So to start, I think it's good to answer the question, what is Corral actually? So by its full name, Creative Audiovisual Labs for the Promotion of Critical Thinking and Media Literacy is a project funded by Erasmus KA3 uh, Action. And it is a three, 36 uh, months long project. So it started in January 2021 and it's gonna last until January 2024. So we are right now in this finishing line, pushing all our efforts towards the, uh, towards the project. The main focus of the project is uh, audiovisual co-creation, media literacy and critical uh, thinking. The project aims to equip young people with competences and skills necessary to reinterpret online and offline media contents by creating audiovisual materials. So the focus is on the critical reinterpretation and enhancing uh, critical uh, thinking and critical thinking skills, but also to provide teachers and trainers with the necessary knowledge, competences and skills on audiovisual education and on creative audiovisual writing and reading methodology which you will uh, soon hear uh, more about. The partnership consists of uh, seven partners from uh, six uh, EU uh, countries. So we have two partners from uh, Italy, uh, all digital from uh, Belgium. Uh, we have a partner from Croatia, from Lithuania, Spain, and uh, Greece. And the project, uh, the target group of the project are young people, so ages 14 to 19, both in formal and non-formal education, their teachers and trainers, and also their parents and the local community uh, they are involved in. So the, the, the project aims to contribute in equipping those young people with necessary tools to actually understand the world that they live in, to stimulate their critical thinking and sense of responsibility, and also to help them realize the power of uh, their voice. Uh, the project applies and scales up the Italian good practice, uh, which I already mentioned a couple of times, so I think it's going to be good for you to hear uh, more about it very uh, soon. And to give you an overview of what has been happening in the project so far and what is still uh, in front of us, um, firstly, the partners adapted the, the good uh, practice, like mentioned already, to their context, uh, and context, and they designed the model for setting up creative audiovisual uh, labs. Secondly, they trained the teachers uh, and trainers, uh, so educators in general, to implement those creative audiovisual uh, labs. This happened to a blended course, so both online and face-to-face uh, -face, uh, workshops, uh, which consist of uh, 10 modules covering technical, digital, and uh, creative skills. And finally, at this uh, very moment, um, those trained teachers and trainers are setting up creative audiovisual labs with their uh, students, and students are creating their own audiovisual content, meaning they're creating their videos, which are gonna take part in national and international uh, contests. So with this brief overview and setting the stage for the project, I would like to give the floor to Chiara to tell us more about the methodology. Thank you, Dea. I'm going to share my screen. Okay. So uh, yeah, you should be able to see it. Um, what you are seeing now, it's one of the claim, uh, which really represents the methodology. So every image represents a point of view and transform reality into narrative. This is one of the uh, foundation of the methodology that I'm going to um, explain a bit. So um, let's have a look at the history of the methodology, which, um, as Dea said before, uh, was born in Italy um, by the work of uh, Anio Gioacchino Stasi, who is a linguist writer, a screenwriter, and an expert in teaching creative processing writing, and Mary Tortolini, who's a painter, essays, and teacher. 
uh, their practices, their practice um, has been developed um, throughout the years thanks to some uh, um, experiences that they had. Uh, the first one was the Omero School of Creative Writing, uh, which was founded by Anio Joachinostasis and other um, scholars and expertise, um, and it was mainly uh, based on uh, um, screenwriting. Uh, so it was one of the first experiences in Italy uh, really related to this topic. Uh, then through the laboratory of, laboratory of image and creative writing at the University of La Sapienza, uh, and later on the creative workshop sounds and images in motion at the Central East with the collaboration of the Central Institute for Sound and Audiovisual Heritage, directly linked to our um, culture uh, ministry, um, the real experience of teaching um, the uh, creative audiovisual writing and reading methodology that now we are developing through the CRAL project started. So it's a long uh, kind of uh, experience and practice. Um, the pedagogical framework uh, which inspires this methodology is based on these instructional strategies and approach. So role model education um, since uh, is also part of the training path, the possibility to uh, really understand uh, how to um, get information by interviews, uh, personalities that can become characters in the, in the audiovisual products, visual thinking strategies, so, uh, uh, any kind of mm, visual thinking training related to nonverbal uh, communication and any kind of cognitive relation mm, which can emerge by analyzing images, participatory teaching and learning, um, cooperative learning, project-based learning, because at the end, one of the aim of these workshops um, is the creation of audiovisual products. And in this process, it, Really, the focus is about the relationship between teachers and students who actively participate in the, in the learning process. And it's cooperative because the students have to work together in order to achieve a goal, which is the final product, but also the process, which is really important. So competence per learning and gamification are other uh, strategies and approaches used uh, in the methodology. Uh, some foundations related to the idea of training in visual thinking. First of all, uh, the fact that the language of images is the oldest language uh, of our uh, human species. So um, it's the most immediate kind of language that we are able to use. Um, and uh, it is also related to what we were used to do before learning to speak. So um, think through images, we were able to recognize light, shadow, spot of color, lines. So this kind of language is something that it's really, um, we are usually not aware of that, but this is really something that uh, we, we are used to and that we can use in learning processes. Um, we also dream, uh, through images. So uh, it's really connected also with the subconscious and a lot of uh, processes, let's say, that we, um, that we know. Um, the foundation is that uh, it's, it's actually the expressive use of the language of, music, of moving images within the educational context, maybe, mainly. So there's a peculiar kind of approach in using this kind of language. Uh, and the idea is that um, we learn how to speak with images through this, this, this kind of methodology in order to represent what we live in our everyday life. So achievement, conflicts, disappointments, um, dreams, illusion, whatever is connected with what we, uh, we experiment every day. Uh, some assumption related to this kind of training in visual thinking. So first of all, uh, youngsters who are actually the um, indirect target group um, of the project, not so indirect actually, but yeah, I mean, um, they are the students who work with the teachers and um, they, are, they actually have access to tools and technical equipment that produce and share images in real time every day. Um, and that is why it's necessary to shape, shape a deep knowledge of visual literacy to understand, first of all, the differences between looking and seeing, and also at the same time, regain an historical sensibility and awareness, which is also part of 
critical thinking sets of knowledge and competencies. So um, the idea is that the image production can be considered a tool of knowledge rather than a risky detachment from reality, which is something that is actually happening in the youngest, youngest generation. Um, and, and also the fact that we use a new, a different perspective on new media literacy education, because usually it mostly consists in training which are based on professional techniques and procedures, uh, screenwriting, directing, editing, but we are also focusing with this methodology on emotional cult and cultural approaches, um, which are um, really uh, strictly connected with this kind of technical competencies. Otherwise, uh, there's a gap uh, for what concerns really critical thinking and media literacy. Um, also, um, the assumption is that uh, this cognitive and expressive dimension can be also a significant source of inspiration in the school context. Um, so at the end, tutors, teachers and students are somehow stimulated to reflect on matters such as visual language, audiovisual historical memory, reality observation, critical interpretation, and together are able to contribute to the so-called youth culture. The general didactic methodological approach uh, of the project is, first of all, as I said before, the fact that it, it is really based on the relationship between uh, teachers and students, so specific kind of interaction between teaching and learning. Uh, it has an horizontal setting, a pair-to-pair -pair relationship between all participants, including uh, teachers. Um, who are really able through this methodology to relate um, in, in, through different dimension and level with their students. Uh, the production of a coherent body of work, uh, which will contain all the imaginaries and specificities uh, which characterize the, the, the learning group, uh, whose dynamic will shape then the educational process itself the development of a series of in internal maturation processes that will stimulate representative actions or realities, and of course, guidelines on how to shoot a set of visual cuts, which is not um, a merely, merely technical uh, kind of uh, uh, knowledge, but it's really about how, uh, how I, I interpret reality in order to produce uh, visual elements. Uh, in the context of a narrative na dramaturgy and uh, the history of cinema in order to create a program that really goes beyond the concept of entertainment. Um, the training structure and materials, um, these are uh, the, the 10 training modules that also Dea mentioned before, who are part of the online training path for, for teachers. Uh, as you can see, um, Let's say that the first uh, three modules are more about a theoretical uh, framework about visual, uh, visual dramaturgy. Um, then the focus is more on the writing process from I mean, the, the four and fifth uh, chapters are more about, the, the, about these. Uh, there's also a focus on the differences between fiction and documentary. Um, which are related to the kind of audiovisual product that the students can produce. And the last chapters are more about technical aspects, but always uh, with this uh, perspective, which is inspired by the methodology. Um, so we have 10 video lessons, which uh, are divided uh, in 10 modules. Each of us, each of them contain also quizzes, exercises, um, external resources that can be consulted by the teachers and the EduPax. The EduPax um, are a, a set of guidelines that has been produced by, by, by the consortium in order to really support the teachers in running uh, the workshop with their students. This is <clears throat> the structure of an EduPax. So as you can see, uh, 
they are quite uh, detailed and structured uh, documents which are related to each module. So they are 10 um, and they are also structured according to the structure of the module. So they have units um, and they, they have a general overview of the topic of the module. They contain learning objectives and outcomes and they have uh, according to each unit a very detailed and structured set of guidelines um, for the teachers with activities, time frame, um, in order for them to really be uh, supported in implementing um, the, the workshop with all the content uh, which are also part of the, of the module. And just to see uh, in a more clear way, let's say how they are structured, you, you can see that um, these are the main element of the structure of the EduPAC. So the, the subject of the lesson, the key competencies that um, are needed, the topics, the key questions that can be uh, made to the students, sources uh, that can be used by the teachers, the description of the activity, and uh, again, practical exercises. So this is uh, all from my side um, and about the methodology. Um, I leave the floor Thank you very now much. To... Yeah. Yes. Thank you very much, uh, Chiara. Okay, so now after hearing about the project and about the methodology, we would like to engage you in a short activity based uh, on the course. So we actually are sure that you leave this webinar with the experience of the of the CRAL course. So I'm going to start by presenting you the the uh, the task, the the activity. Uh, we would kindly ask you to go on the website, on the Padlet website, the link is going to be shared on, in the chat, or you can scan the QR code, um, or you can simply rewrite this in your browser. And you, um, you would go online, use the search engine to look for a photo that you would associate with any points of the Corral Manifesto. Well, now at this point, you can ask what is the Corral Manifesto and uh, which photo should we look, uh, should we look for? Um, let's um let's start uh, to go more into it um as a starting point in applying crawl methodology it's useful to define initial interpretative uh, and operational approach and this has been done through a uh, crawl manifesto so the idea behind is to stimulate all participants to apply sort of a circular approach in which the skills the experiences and all the points of view um, can be shared with a view of mutual growth. So we are all helping each other to grow. Uh, the first point of the manifesto is to keep your mind widely open to listen and observe and to get passionate about your project. The second point is to not focus on only one point of view because in reality, there are many different points of view and it's always good to be aware of them. The th third point is a very important one and it's to have fun and to laugh a lot uh, because well let's not take everything too too serious and consider that each of the passion can help even when they seem perhaps out of context the fourth rule is that the process is more important than the outcome and this is something that i'm sure we're all aware that the journey is usually more important than the than the final than the final point the fifth point focuses on the rule number two and rule number three of the 10 rules for students and teachers. So the rule number two uh, talks about the general duties of a student, which are to pull out everything out of your teacher and to pull out everything out of your fellow students. On contrary, rule number three uh, focuses on general duties of the teacher, which is to pull everything out of your students. And of course, the remaining extremely precious uh, advice uh, given by John Cage. The sixth point is to think visual and to allow yourself to wander around while producing the images. The seventh point is to make mistakes because mistakes are good and because we learn through mistakes. Also because mistakes can produce very interesting visual results. The eighth point is uh, very much focused on the co-creation uh, and the importance of co-creation and uh, the fact that it also tastes delicious and there is nothing more satisfying than to actually uh, combine your idea with idea from somebody else. The ninth point is to research a lot and research everywhere uh, because there is something uh, to find uh, all around you. And the 10th point is that we should always be respectful um, because the human family is uh, vast and diverse. 
Um, so to give you again the the website in case you haven't managed to go there yet, and I will go back to the manifesto. Uh, so we would ask you to find any photo that you associate in any way to any of the points of the uh, manifesto. And I'm gonna stop sharing uh, this screen to also share the Padlet. In case you're not familiar with Padlet, you just have to uh, click on the little uh, plus sign in the corner and add your photo. Also, if you wish to write any additional comments on it, you can also do so, um, even though the point, I mean, the point at this moment is to, to find a visual representation of it. Could it be a photo which we have created? Of course. If you if you have one that you would like to share, of course. Even better in that case. Do we have to add the description because it's asking me for a, like if I want to write something? If there is something you would like to share, yes. If not, you can just write a dot uh, or something to move on mm -hmm. that stage. But if you would like to explain more of how you connect it with the manifesto, you can of course write it out. And maybe while you're still searching for, for photos, um, I would just also like to mention that the Corral methodology is actually placing a particular emphasis on the relationship between students and teachers, and that the heart of the, this dialogue between students and teachers is actually listening, which apart from talking about critical thinking and vi visual media literacy is also um, showing the students how important it is to have the skills of active listening, which sometimes we overlook it uh, in our educational systems. And the guiding values for a successful dialogue um, can be felt and experienced in exactly that active listening and trust, openness, and respect, like we already mentioned as a very important point of the, of the manifesto. Dea, would you be able to share the manifesto once again? Thank you.
sorry, there. Can you please go back to the QR code? Uh, yes, of course. Uh, there is also uh, the link to the website is also shared in the chat. Okay, thank you. But I'm coming back to the. Here we go. Thank you. Can go back to the other page. Thanks. Okay, I still see uh, the three dots at the top of the Padlet uh, screen. So perhaps we're gonna get some more photos. But at this point, I would also like to ask if you feel comfortable sharing either in the chat um, or if you would like to unmute yourself at this moment, uh, we're, you're very welcome to do so and to share uh, something more about the photo that you decided to, to share or to put. Um, if everybody's okay, I can go first. I don't know. Um, yeah, of course. So I didn't want to think too much because if we're going with associations, it's kind of like the first thing that comes up to your mind. And uh, really this photo that I put, the united hands holding each other is uh, the first thing that I thought, especially after uh, the 10th rule, but even... Um, not just for the 10th rule, right, but for the whole manifesto, I think uh, I see this picture because um, uh, this project simply cannot be um, simply cannot be done by one person. It, um, multiple people have to be joined together and they have to um, they have to communicate and share their ideas and uh, uh, they, they have to be united if they're going to create something together. That, that goes with many things, but uh, especially for this project. And um, when I first uh, was introduced to, be, to this project, I really liked it exactly because of this, because I felt that it would unite students and teachers, which is one of the um, goals, as well as students uh, themselves. Yes, thank you very much, Martina. I really, really agree with all your points, especially with the fact that it's not a one-man show and we're all in this uh, together and it's a, it's a common, common work. Uh, is there anybody else who would like to share anything? Well, if not uh, at this point, um, thank you for, for sharing the photos. We will keep the link uh, open. Uh, you can still share your impressions. And at this point, um, I would like to invite uh, Eleni to share a bit more about the project platform and actually where you can find all the resources that we presented uh, so far. So uh, Eleni, um, the floor is yours. Hello everyone, please just allow me a second in order to share my screen. I hope you are able to see my presentation at this point. Yes. 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 Okay. So uh, first of all, let me also welcome you uh, to this session, uh, the presentation of uh, the Crowd Project. I would like uh, just to take uh, one minute to like a few seconds, actually, just to thank uh, All Digital and uh, Peter Palovki for providing us the opportunity to present this project within the whole framework of the old digital weeks. And of course, I also want to uh, thank the project manager, uh, the project coordinator there for uh, making this possible. And of course, all the colleagues uh, working with the crown project from all the project partners, because without the collaboration of, uh, without the collaboration of all of them, the project wouldn't have been possible. And, uh, uh, we wouldn't have anything to present at this point. So I'm sure that I go, I'm going to take you actually back to a lot of technical points at this point, because I really enjoyed 
uh, the most inspiring presentation by my dear colleague uh, Chiara Bocini from from Edina, and also like the inspiring presentations from Peter at the beginning about the whole uh, scopus of the all digital weeks and from there about uh, the main purpose of the project. But I hope that I'm not gonna bore you too much uh, with this information. But on the contrast, that I'm gonna motivate uh, maybe some of you that you that they have not uh, you have not. Uh, yet get familiarized with the cloud platform in order to be familiarized with it in the uh, future. So my name is Elena Yurgakaku. I'm the project manager for cloud, cloud project on behalf of the Hellenic Open University Daisy Research Group. And I'm gonna uh, talk to you today a bit about the cloud platform. The main uh, purpose of the, of the cloud online platform uh, is to enhance critical thinking and media literacy among young people between 14 and 19 years old, their parents and the educational staff. This is the main scope of the whole project is already being introduced by there at the beginning. Uh, and the main, let's say, tool uh, in order to reach this target uh, has been and will be the cloud platform. A few words about the technical uh, development of the platform. Uh, this development has been implemented by Hellenic Open uh, University following a thorough needs analysis that took place for a period of six months. Uh, engaging, see, we can see here that we also have a, a collaboration process also uh, within internally in the project about uh, creating this platform. So the platform better version has been realized uh, by us, by the Hellenic Open University and uh, specifically by our technician, Anastasis Papalopoulos, who I think uh, he also has joined us today, and I want to thank him for all his great work on it on January 2022. Then it has been again reviewed by your partners. This has been done because exactly we, want, uh, to get, we wanted to get feedback by everyone who's going to be involved, who's going to be involved in the project in order to get the best results out of it. Uh, following the first the first version that it has been created, then we started like uh, uploading all the educational videos and the supporting materials, something that uh, Chiara Borsini mentioned in detail before, all the 10 modules that you can find in the platform. And uh, on our part, as a technical, uh, mainly technical partner, we, are, we, of course, are going to support uh, technically the platform until the, e the end of the project. Uh, the target for the future about, the, uh, about this platform is to be upgraded and uh, following, to be upgraded following specific comments and review that we're going to take from, some, from the piloting uh, teachers. So at this point, we have piloting teachers uh, who are taking the course by each uh, project country. Uh, these people at the end, these piloting teachers at the end, they're going to provide us with a review as the final users. And we're going to use this, uh, this review in order to have the final version to be released to the public uh, on uh, July 2023. This is the, the timeline as suggested by the project itself. And this is the timeline that it will be kept. So at that point, uh, we will hope for all of you to be able to uh, to, to be motivated enough to get inside and uh, take a look yourself in the platform, in the updated platform. Cloud platform is hosted at the Daisy dedicated server. So uh, we as a research group, we have, we own a, a server of our own. And this fact I mentioned here, with, uh, and I think, I think it's important because it offers sustainability to the platform after the end of the project. So after the end of the founding period, on January 2024, that they are mentioned before, the platform is going to still uh, remain open for anyone who wants to join and uh, take the course and use uh, the, the different features of the platform. A few words uh, about the platform itself. The platform includes the, includes the online training course for teachers, as it has been described before by Chiara. Also, it uh, includes uh, a specific dedicated space uh, that uh, at a later stage, or even already uh, for some of the countries, uh, the, young, the young people during the pilot action uh, can uh, upload the audiovisual materials that they created in cooperation with their teachers. 
and uh, it facilitates an uh, online community of practice, or maybe I shall say communities of practice, as we will see afterwards, because in the national, in the different national groups, we offer different tools in order for the people to be able to co-react between them. Some of the main services of the, of the platform, uh, these are standard, uh, this is our standard services that we also uh, find very useful with, uh, in our expertise and we thought together with our partners uh, that uh, they're going to be useful for this platform as well. And they include the members, profile management, the training course, including, of course, the training materials, a collaboration space in order to enhance exactly the community uh, interaction, forums for the same reason, and a section for articles, blog, and the showcase of audiovisual materials, a space that is going to be uh, open to the public at the end of the project. So even without registration, people were going to be able to uh, look at the audiovisual materials that they have been, uh, that they have been created during the project. Some of the platform main features, it, ha it has been built as an open source, it has a responsive design, the main structure of it is in all partners languages. So uh, what we have here is a platform that it has been constructed, constructed at the beginning in English, but then we translated in all the uh, different partner languages as we're gonna see uh, later on. The training and educational materials, again, in all partner languages, and uh, its design is compatible with the web content accessibility guidelines, and it is GDPR compatible. Uh, we're going to take a look through some screenshots inside the basic characteristics of uh, the platform and the basic sections. So you can see here like a photo of the home page, the landing page as you, uh, you can, uh, as you will log in inside the platform. Uh, a simple registration uh, is required in order for you to be able to gain access to the platform uh, just by inserting a username, your first and last name, the email address, uh, and the password. There is a specific uh, dashboard and platform activity in order for you to be able to, in order for all everyone English to be able to follow the different uh, activities that they, are, they, they, that they take place inside the platform in a very easy way. Uh, then afterwards, we see that we have the training course, with, a, with an introduction um, about saying a few uh, things about uh, what is uh, uh, the course about, and then it's being followed by the manifesto, which you saw already so the main uh, 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 the main points of it at the previous uh, presentation. Uh, I need to uh, mention at this point that the cloud online training course is addressed exclusively to trainers and teachers for training purposes. So the process was like this. At the beginning, we had some trainers that we uh, that they have been trained inside the uh, cloud methodology is greatly uh, presented by Tiara before, and also uh, on how to how they are going to be able to use the platform as tutors. And then we involved from its different country, at least 10 pilot teachers, 10 teachers that they were gonna uh, take this course and also at the same time pretty much use uh, and test the platform. Uh, and they are uh, the main target group of uh, the direct uh, target group of the platform. That is uh, the reason that Chiara uh, mentioned before that uh, students are directly slash indirectly uh, a target group on this project in the sense that uh, we train the, uh, the teachers and then they their role is uh, on a collaborative uh, process with their students to um, to run to, to run through uh, the whole crowd methodology and uh, create this uh, audiovisual materials based on it. As I mentioned before, the uh, platform has been released in English but also in the project languages. This, uh, of course, happened again in the sense of inclusivity. We wanted uh, as many, we want the language not to be a barrier for some of the people that may wouldn't feel that confident in order to use the English language. So you can find it to the platform in Italian, Spanish, Croatian, Lithuanian, and Greek. Of course, the translations have taken place by, uh, 
by uh, each uh, project, uh, each partner by each uh, piloting country. The training course itself, uh, again, it has been pre it has been pre presented uh, before. Uh, much better than in this presentation by Chiara. It uh, it has part that they have been uh, created by the Italian and then translated by all partners uh, in the national languages, and they have been uploaded by HU to the platform. So what you will see when you take this course, first of all, you're gonna see some of the video lessons. And of course, also you're gonna see extra supporting training material that uh, can help uh, even further uh, the teachers to get a better idea of the general context and to uh, enhance them in order to um, implement the crowd methodology in their schools. Of course, there's also, uh, and I say of course, because for me it's uh, normal, but I shall explain this, that there is a, a, a section about with assignments and quizzes. Um, the CRAL is a massive open online uh, course. This is gonna be at the end, that's where we're gonna open in the public. Uh, and as such, uh, we needed to have some quizzes in order to assess uh, the knowledge that has been uh, hopefully uh, improved by the end of it in order to be able to award to the participants also uh, the different certificates of uh, participation. Like I said, the second, except from the training course, the second uh, main point of the platform is to enhance these communities, uh, communities of practice. In order to do that, we had set uh, multiple tools that we have found uh, that they have worked uh, from our experience in different projects. One of them are the different uh, groups that someone can join if they want to whatever uh, of the groups they, they find that they're gonna be useful for them. But also we have uh, forums that they can also like upload or uh, uh, indicate something that it's interesting to them. And uh, this is uh, all in order to have this uh, interaction in between the different participant, participants that we expect that it's gonna uh, have at the end um, an extra uh, point of knowledge given also uh, to us and to everyone participating. There is also, of course, like a members uh, a member section when some where someone can indicate the different uh, members that they have part they, that they are participating in this specific course, and each member uh, has uh, the opportunity. Each participant has the opportunity for the profile management for for their profile management, so they can uh, make their profiles. Uh, as they as they want, uh, like to add information or not, to add a photograph, etc. Of course, uh, there is also the opportunity to uh, uh, for this uh, for for each individual member to receive notification, uh, some uh, some specific notifications that we have enabled in order to be up to date about whatever uh, everything that happens to the platform. But also there is this function about private messages because as as I as I mentioned in the beginning, we have tutors in this course in order to help the teachers through the, this process. So so if uh, someone um, feels that needed through a private message and not through the forums, they can directly. Uh, communicate with these tutors uh, as they need. There is also a blog sec section uh, that the people can, uh, the participants can upload content such as articles, and uh, it can be like a repository at the end of all the material that has been uploaded by uh, the participants. Uh, you can. Uh, this is like uh, like what I mentioned are some basic characteristics of the platform. But I think that the most useful would be for you and for everyone to log in inside the platform. You can find the address here in order to be able to see for yourself the diff and try for yourself the different features uh, that I just uh, mentioned. Uh, like uh, uh, like I mentioned before, the uh, 
At this point, uh, the platform is not open to the public. Uh, it has been directed to, a specific, to specific uh, pilot and teachers from each country that they are uh, that they are working on it and they are actually testing it at the same time. At the end of this process, we will take their feedback, like again as I said before, and have this upgrade. And we're going to be open it to the public on the July uh, 2023. Then, uh, as uh, a consortium, I don't know if uh, there maybe we mentioned this also afterwards. We plan to have uh, another opportunity to be able to have some hands-on activities inside the platform at the All Digital Summit that is going to take place at the end of September, where we will be able to present the upgraded and final version of the platform. And uh, of course, we invite you all uh, from July on to uh, take a look at it. We are here at your disposal for any questions and or inquiries. And uh, also for to invite you at uh, this event, uh, at the All Digital Zoom, at the All Digital Summit, in order to have a better idea about the crowd uh, project in general, but also at the crowd platform itself. I, I would like to thank you for your attention. I hope I didn't uh, bore you too much. These are, these are our social media where we, you can find us uh, about uh, the, the crowd project uh, or, and for any inquiries you have about this. And of course, you have also um, the crowd uh, specific social media that you can find us at. Thank you very much. There, the floor back to you. Thank you very much, Eleni. And thank you also for, for telling us about the upcoming events. Um, so, yes. for a little hiccup uh, on the way. Uh, like I said, thanks a lot, Eleni, for the overview of the platform and for showing us all possibilities that the platform is uh, giving. As Eleni said, the platform is still not open to the wider public, but it's uh, going to be open soon, and we would like to invite all of you to, to join us there. We have a couple of minutes um, to, to open the floor if there are any burning questions, comments that you would like to share with us. You can... You can uh, feel free to take the to take the floor. I'm wondering if you have any teachers who have experienced the methodology during the course, the, the training program, and as well uh, uh, taught stu students. Uh, and if 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 we have any of these teachers with us today, if they could share their experiences. Do you have any of the teachers in the audience? Well, well, if not, of course, uh, uh, then it's uh, an open question. And perhaps during the project's closing event uh, at the end of September in Zagreb, we will we will hear uh, and uh, and hear about their experiences. We will come and present. Yes, yes, indeed. Um, as it was mentioned already twice uh, on twenty fifth of September in Zagreb, we're going to have a final international workshop of the project, and we are planning to also dedicate a specific time of the workshop for teachers and students to share their first hand experience uh, with the course. Um, if there are no questions or comments, which is also a good point, which means that we were all uh, clear and everything is and everything is going well, um, we would um, well. I think it's the time to 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 wrap up. Uh, I would like you to to leave this webinar with um, with a point that's on this uh, photo actually, and that to to remember that every image actually represents a point of view, and that that is what transforms the reality into a narrative. So let's not be strangers. Um, we can stay connected through the Crowl social media. You can see the handle here. You can also check the project uh, website. Um, and uh, yeah, we hope to see you on our future events and hope to, to, to have you again. And thank you all for joining. And perhaps at the moment, I would before you all leave, I would also ask, uh, well, I will stop, share, stop sharing the screen. And I would also ask you to 
open your cameras so we can take a group photo if you agree. Uh, Sasha, could you take care of that? <laughs> yes, thank you, dear. So we would like to ask you to make a group photo if you want to be uh, on a group photo, uh, of course. So we will wait maybe a few more minutes waiting for some people. Also, I can share the virtual background of the campaign in the chat in case if you want to be in the style of the campaign. Here you go. Let's wait a few more seconds. We are all kind of frozen now because we don't know when Sasha is going to take the photo. So Sasha, you can just go on and oh, we can. Okay, we can so close. if everyone is ready, three, two, one, smile. Yep, perfect. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Sasha. And thank you all again for joining. Um, I wish you all a lovely day and hope to see you on some other All Digital Weeks event. Thank you. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye.